Hi, welcome back to the Meltran Designs podcast. I'm your host, Melissa, also known as Anansi on Ravelry, and on Plurk and Instagram, I am Meltran Designs. Today is Sunday, January 25th, 2015, and it has been way too long since I podcasted. I'll get into that in a little bit, but first, um, this is episode 63. And I would like to welcome back returning viewers, and I would like to welcome any new viewers. Thank you for um, spending your time with me, and um, I hope you enjoy our time together. So, yeah, things have been a little crazy um, schedule-wise in my life, and that's why I have not podcasted, but my my goal for 2015 is to podcast more regularly, at least every other week. I would like to podcast more, but um, I'm, I'm hoping for at least twice a month. I don't know exactly when that's going to be because, um, because of the schedule I have now and because things are going to be changing, and um, I, I will get into that here very soonly, I promise. So anyways, I hope you all had a great Christmas and New Year's. It's been that long and it seems like forever since Christmas. But anyways, I hope you all enjoyed your holiday seasons and festivities and came out unscathed. <laughs> um, for Christmas, I well, I'm just going to go into going on slash coming up. No, going on coming up, please. What happened before? Which usually is called happenings this week, but it would be happenings this month. So there you go. For Christmas, I got a new tabletop Swift, yarn Swift, that is from Stanwood. Um, and it's they are the same people who made the um, yarn, the ball winder that I got last year for Christmas. The Amazon wish list that I have at, um, obviously works, at least for my husband. So that was a big surprise. Usually we just kind of tell each other, get me this or get me this. And that's what we have. And, um, yeah, anyways, so that was, that was a nice surprise and I've used it multiple times. I have not been able to wind off of my wheel with it yet, which is part of the reason I wanted a tabletop Swift. I've had an umbrella Swift for years. There's nothing wrong with it. It's, it's in great condition still. Um, the only problem is that if you're winding onto it, it, it can compress or condense, whatever, and can skew your measurements. And with the tabletop Swift, if you're not familiar with, with what that is, it's two pieces of wood that are an X and then they have pegs that come out of them. And so there's no, there's no condensing. So anyways, um, yeah, it's, it's fun to use. And it's kind of, it, I like that both of them are the same brand. Like, I'm not really a brand junkie or anything, but it's kind of fun. So, yeah. Um, let me see. Since then, so last time I talked about that I had started my new job, and that is going quite well. You'll notice my my armband. This is some um, Coban, which is just some bandage material that sticks to itself, kind of like an ace bandage. Um, if you've been watching for a while, I don't know if... I'm trying to remember if I talked about it. I'm pretty sure I did. When I fell back in May when I was clogging and fell before I had the baby, um, I kind of messed up my arm and um, then had the baby like a month later. And because of that, I, uh, for about six months after you have a baby, you have this stuff it, that your body produces called relaxin, which is exactly what it sounds like. It relaxes everything, but it, it also makes it so your bones are a little, a little wibbly wobbly and, um, kind of can slip in and out of place if they're not really, really in place. So, um, because of my job, I've become kind of the primary, um, custard scooper on the nights that I work. Um, mainly, not because I'm like so amazing at scoop. I mean, I'm I'm pretty good at scooping it, but um, I can manage when we have a whole bunch of orders up on our screen. Um, I can manage telling people where they are, what they're doing, and um, so because of that, I'm scooping a lot. And like I said before, frozen custard is is more dense and heavy than ice cream, and so I'm doing this motion down in a bucket um, multiple hours a night. And because of that, 
my wrist started bothering me again and also up at my elbow because my the two bones where they go here went out of place when I fell as well um, and I have developed some tendonitis. I don't have my see there's no bump under my shirt. I don't have my brace on right now. My my chiropractor's been treating me and um, she suggested that I get a tennis tennis elbow um, brace and it has it's changed my life. It 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 makes it so I can actually do stuff and, and not be in pain. Well, not as bad a pain. I'm actually not hurting right now, but I'm also not doing anything. Notice that I'm not knitting. <laughs> um, I She actually suggested that um, even possibly for from now until forever to wear it while I'm knitting just to take the pressure off of the tendon from, from throwing. Um, but long story short, we're working on getting things to stay in place where they go. Um, but until then I wear this to put pressure on these bones right here that like to slip out of place. And then I wear the other one up here to take the pressure off of the, well, to put pressure on the tendon, but to take the strain off of it. Um, and my biceps tendon had, had slipped off, which I didn't know and she slipped it back on, which didn't hurt until later that day. And it's really pretty tender, even though it was a couple days ago now. So yeah. Um, so that's been going on. It, it hasn't affected my knitting mainly because I don't have a ton of knitting time anymore. So, um, it, it hasn't really cut down on it every so often I'll stop and take my stuff off and kind of, you know, massage my arm and, um, I put either I am she gave me some biofreeze or I have some some deep blue rub from doTERRA that I use and sometimes before I go to work I use the actual just the the deep blue rub essential oil that I mix with some coconut oil put that on my arm so it's really concentrated and it burns like the whole way to work but it, it helps um, with the pain later on so Anyways, uh, that's been going on, and she suggested, um, I don't have them in here with me, so I can't tell you exactly what I'll, uh, well, I can try to remember. She suggested some different vitamins for me to get on. Nothing crazy or anything, but things that can help with inflammation. So um, one of the things that she said was that digestive enzymes, if you take them either two hours after eating or an hour before you eat, they can work as an anti-inflammatory instead of a di digestive enzyme because there's nothing to digest. And so um, she said to get one that had um, po popane, po popane, popane from papaya, popane, uh, bromine from pineapples. And then she also wanted it to have something that I couldn't find in there and something that starts with a B, but it's essentially, um, frankincense. It, it, it's like from the plant that you get frankincense oil from or something like that. Anyways, there's that. She also wanted me to get on turmeric for the pain, um, because it can help with, with different issues and, um, vitamin D because, she said pretty much everybody is deficient in vitamin D and that was at Costco. That was a nice find. That was like $9 for six months worth <laughs> or five, four, no, four months worth for $8. And then one of the digestive enzymes that I found were like six months worth. So anyways, um, I got those. Um, but what was nice was the, I couldn't find one with the frankincense in it either, the digestive enzymes, but the turmeric I found, they had a blend that was a higher quality, turmeric extract with the frankincense stuff in it. Um, so anyways, I'm kind of pill popping, but I, I don't want to take like ibuprofen, you know, all day, every day. Cause it, it is really, really not good for you in large doses and continuous use. Um, I take it. I always have some in my pocket at work if I start to hurt too bad. 
and I have some stuff called Formula 303 that is a natural muscle relaxer that I usually take or that I've been taking before I go to work and I have a couple of those in my pocket as well if I if I catch the pain when it's still in the kind of achy phase and take those then it works but if it gets to the point where it's hurting then I just take the ibuprofen actually I usually take both um, to make sure that it's it's gone so um, anyway trying to get on top of that and and <clears throat> in addition to those pains. My back is adjusting to all of it and um, I've been having some issues and so hopefully the, the plan is for me to go to her as needed which right now it's been every week which I cannot continue to afford even though I get a cash discount. Um, it's it's $36 each time but that's you know $144 a month which is not part of our budget. So um, our, our goal is to get it to where I can go, you know, every other week and then try to make it just like once a month. But I'm going to go as much as I need right now because my back, it's my, my rib area, my upper back, which is not a place I usually have had problems with. Um, but I do right now. <laughs> so anyways, not complaining. It's, it's not unmanageable. We're just trying to get on top of it. And, um, yeah, I'm not hurting right now. My elbow is, a, it's kind of achy when I said it wasn't hurting. It's not hurting, hurting. It's kind of, it's always kind of there, like a, kind of like a toothache that's just not quite gone. It's just, it's kind of irritating. But anyways, it's all right. It'll get better. And that's all that matters. If you notice the kind of bouncing, you're sitting on my bed with me. My kids and Jake are all out in the living room and, um, he never leaves. I'll talk about that here in a second, but I wanted to record. So we're sitting on my bed together. I was going to put this, put the computer over on something else, but it was a little bit too far away and the light was weird. And so <clears throat> anyways, I'm trying to sit as still as possible, but if there's some bouncing, I apologize. And I look like I'm sitting really far to the side, but it's just the angle of the bed so, or the camera with the <clears throat> bed. <clears throat> All right, so why Jake's here? So, short history. I, this is going to be a long podcast. I'm sorry. I'm not sorry. This is just going to be a long podcast because there's a lot to explain of what's going on. So, pause now. Go pop some popcorn. Make yourself some, I don't know, get some pop. Get some tea. I don't know. Get comfortable. So, quick overview of how his job has gone. If you haven't heard of the store called Albertsons, it's just a, it's a grocery chain that started here locally, but it's a nationwide, it's, I think it's all over the nation. Anyways, he started working for them in their IT department, I don't know, eight years ago. Then Super Value bought Albertsons, and so he became a Super Value employee. Same job and everything, just Super Value. Then about two and a half, well, three years ago, this month, I guess, he was told by Super Value, we are outsourcing your job and your job will end sometime around August to October. So he immediately started looking for other work, didn't find anything, didn't find anything. Well, the company that he or that Super Value outsourced to is called TCS and they're based out of India, but they're a multinational company. They needed someone on site because there were physical things that needed to be done. Um, and so he got hired by them and it was kind of funny cause he, he got hired for the same job, but got better hours. He was guaranteed Monday through Friday and had to work an occasional weekend or be on call. Um, every fifth weekend or something like that and then um, and they doubled his pay so that proved to us what we already knew which is Idahoans are very underpaid compared to market value of, of things so um, that's what he's been doing for the last two and a half years and then um, 
the last week of 2014. I was trying to remember the the time. You know, maybe it was right before Christmas or whatever. Um, they said. Yeah, because it was right before Christmas, and they said the following week on Friday was going to be his last day going into work. So then we went into panic mode, like, oh, crap. He would still have a job because it's a consulting consulting services, and so they would find him a new job, but the new job, who knows where it's going to be. So he starts, you know, we kind of go into, like I said, into panic mode. He starts to look for stuff around here, you know, doesn't know what to do, and then he finds out, the, the on-site contract has ended, but they want to keep you on call, essentially, for four weeks to con to be a consultant. So we're going to pay you to work from home, still turn in your timesheet like you have been. <clears throat> Nothing changes, just you're, you're at home. Okay, so he's essentially being paid to do nothing. He's been called once, and he's been doing it for three weeks. He's being paid for 45 hours a week. And yes, that's five hours of overtime every week to do nothing. Like, he is, he, he literally has been called one time. So in the meantime, again, he <clears throat> starts, well, not start, but kind of picks back up looking for job opportunities around here, put in applications everywhere, and um, also has been in touch with people in his company because he's like, I, I, you know, I don't know what to do. And his his HR person, she's kind of incompetent, but she um, she says, well, if you're not willing to relocate, then maybe you need to find another job. And he's like, I just don't want to relocate. I, I not I, but I need to go where the money is. So then, his super value supervisor, who is with his consulting company. Um, forwards him the name of a person within that the, within the company who can help him find a new position. So he's been emailing with her, and we don't have anything as of yet. Um, I'm not moving. The kids and I will not be moving. I'll get back to that. I'll circle back to that, but that's not that's not going to happen. So she she says, "Hey, I or she." She forwards him an email of a job possibility and then forwards him another email or includes him in an email of um, her telling the people at this place, um, here's a resume for you to look over if you're interested in, in this employee. The job is in Los Angeles. <laughs> um, he requested that they at least try to keep him on the West Coast or, you know, Western side of the United States so that um, he could at least come home, you know. Um, so, anyways, it's at a really, really big name company down there that if he gets hired on, I'll, I'll say it, but if he doesn't, then it doesn't matter and whatever, I don't doesn't matter that much but anyways so there's a chance that like in a week I get I mean I don't know how this whole thing works but he's done this next week so he um you can hear a baby crying in the background she's not being ignored I promise I can hear them talking to her she's not feeling well she has a really stuffy nose and kind of has a I don't know if she has a cold or if she's teething but she's not happy so anyways he um yeah, he might be moving to L.A. short term. <laughs> the problem is, not well, I mean, the problem separately from that is that he's had two really good phone interviews. Both people said, you're exactly what we're looking for. We would love to hire you. We can't afford you because they're Idaho companies. And the salary that one of them said... Um, well, one of, one of them said, here's how much we were wanting, you know, what we were looking to pay. It's $20,000 a year less than what he's making now. <laughs> and he's like, he's like, well, okay, well, you know, I, I can't take a $20,000 pay cut. We don't live extravagantly. If you saw my house, 
you'd be like, wow, you guys probably only make 20,000 a year. Probably not, but we have a very small house. We don't have new things. We don't really even have very nice things. Um, but we're fine. I'm not complaining. That's just how it is right now. Um, but we can't afford a 20,000, like our bills aren't super tight. We have extra that we're able to pay towards our car to get it paid off, but not, we're not paying $20,000 a year on a car. Let's just say that we don't have that extra to do without. Um, and, and even with my nighttime job, it wouldn't, it wouldn't make up for it. And we, and so that it, it's not, it's not feasible. So, um, I knew that was going to be the case. It's, it kind of sucks that it turned out to be reality, but you know, what can you do? So for now we're looking at him possibly moving down there. Um, but we don't know yet. You know, they, they, the company has to say, yes, this is who we want or whatever. Um, because it would be a promotion, not within his company, but from what he was doing, I told him he needs to renegotiate his salary because the worst they can do is say no, but with it being in LA and stuff like that, um, I think they'll negotiate with him. So luckily if he gets a substantial raise, LA and Las Vegas, which is only two hours away from there, are both really affordable to fly in and out of. So he would be able to come home like a couple weekends a month, but that would mean he was only home a couple weekends a month. So that would mean most likely I would have to quit my job, which is not the end of the world. I'm, I'm enjoying it a lot. And, and I hope that's not the case. I, um, I'm hoping maybe even I could figure out a way to work even just one day a week especially if he's not here so I can get out of the house. But, um, yeah, anyways, if I can, if I can figure something out, you know, this is all up in the air. So next week I might record and be like, Hey, none of this is happening and blah, 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 blah. <laughs> so I'm just talking cause you know, anyways, so Stay tuned for future updates. That's kind of what we're facing. Um, if he does have to go down there, we're going to look for kind of a, you know, rent a room type situation. I already know there's Airbnb. I'm also going to put out, you know, I'll put out feelers with my network of friends and, you know, Facebook contacts and people on Plurk and, you know, my knitter friends too. And I'll just put out a, you know, put up the bat signal of, Hey, <laughs> we need help finding somebody that my husband can rent a room from. So anyways, all right. Now that I'm 22 minutes in, um, I'm trying to think of if anything else has gone on last weekend, we spent the weekend watching the extended edition of Lord of the Rings with our kids. They'd never seen them before. And it was so much fun. They're insanely long, obviously, cause they were already long and then you add a half hour into it. So you're looking at a three and a half hour movie. And we have the original extended editions that are on two DVDs. <laughs> Cause we got them like pre-order when they first came out. So it was kind of nice having that break though, because all the kids were like, Oh, I need a drink. I want to pop some popcorn. Oh, I want to go to the bathroom. So it was kind of nice having that forced intermission there. But, um, we did that Friday, Saturday, and then they didn't have school Monday of this week because of Martin Luther King Jr. Day. So we did it Friday, Saturday, and Monday. Um, Sunday went over to my dad's house. So uh, yeah, I think we'll probably do that again. It was a lot of fun. And it's a, it's a lot of story following. I'm sure you, most of you have seen them. And so um, the kids were a little confused here and there. And I remember being confused the first time I, I watched through them too. Because there's a lot of names and some of them are similar. And and with the accent on top of it and you know, all of it. So, um, I'm saying I'm a lot, sorry. Anyways, I'm taking a drink. All right. I think that catches you up. Yeah, I think that catches you Oh, no, 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 let me tell you about something because I just looked over at one of my acquisitions. On January 1st, I got to go to a spin-in and um, it, it was out in uh, the one that I go to once a month out in Emmett and Sweet, which is like an hour away. 
I got to go up there and um, the gal who was hosting it has a little yarn shop in her shop. You know, she has a shop outside and part of it is a yarn, a little yarn shop. And I bought some stuff that I'll show you a little bit later. But anyways, that was a lot of fun. I did not spin because I was trying to get caught up on some knitting. But anyways, that was fun. And I actually just went yesterday again to, it was with that same group, but it was a little bit closer. The gal who hosted is getting ready to move. And, um, she, she lives about 30 minutes closer. So that, that was nice. It was about halfway. <laughs> so, all right, let's get into other knitting to knitting related things <clears throat> going on slash coming up. Nothing is going on now, but coming up, starting on February 1st, which is, what is that, next Sunday? Yes, next Sunday is February 1st. And that will start a knit-along that Lisa from the 90% Knitting Podcast, or Fiber Nymph, she and I are co-hosting a color work knit-along, stranded color work, so no slip stitches, no cheater color work, actual stranded color work. It, don't, it doesn't have to be complicated. It doesn't have to be an Alice Starmore sweater with, you know, 20 different colors. It can be two color, you know, um, it can be a hat, it can be a mug cozy, it can be a pot holder. It doesn't have to be crazy. Just something that you want to make and um, improve your color work skills at, I guess. Um, that will run February and March and we haven't really discussed if there will be any prizes per se. I don't know. I'll talk to her and see if we want to do something like that or just have it for fun. I don't know. Whatever. Anyways, so there's that. Oh, well, there's kind of something going on already. Kind of. There's, um, and I, I started a thread in the Meltran Designs group on Ravelry. I'm calling it Cal Piggybacking because I enjoy participating in knit-alongs, but I don't always want to host them. And I don't really have enough people in my group um, or who watch my podcast who post actively when I do have knit-alongs. And so, and not complaining, just stating a fact. <laughs> so I thought it would be fun to just kind of piggyback off of other knit-alongs that you guys might be um, participating in. So feel free to chatter and post pictures and please post links if it goes to, you know, a, a Ravelry group or whatever, or a specific pattern or, or things like that. And if other people want to join in, it, it'll be kind of a database, a little bit of a database. There's a group called Cal Fanatics that um, you can get every, every night along under the sun off of that. This isn't meant to be that. Just sharing and talking and just chatter. Um, I have a knit along that I'm participating in right now. It's the knitting game and I'm, um, I'll talk about that in my, in my projects and I'll show it to you. Um, but anyways, that'll go on through the year. It's, it's like I said, just for fun. So please post in there if there's a knit along that you're, um, participating in. I will start a separate thread for the stranded color work knit along just because it is specific and feel free to post in mine and in Lisa's groups. I, um, that way, if there are people participating from, you know, if you're participating in both, because you watch both of us, please post pictures in both. That way the people from hers who don't watch me and the people from mine who don't watch her, they can still see your stuff. So anyways, that is all that's going on for that. Um, I do have a fiber event that I'm going to be traveling to coming up, but um, I'm not going to tell you yet. I haven't bought my plane ticket. So um, yes, I do have to fly there, which isn't, that doesn't really tell you anything because pretty much all the fiber events that I go to, except for fiber train that's here, <laughs> I have to fly to or could fly to. Some of them are close enough to drive, but this one is not. It, it's a, it's kind of far away. Well, it's pretty far away. It's very far away. Still in the country, but far away. So I'll tell you about that at another date. All right. I think that covers all of that. And at just about 30 minutes in, let's look at some knitting stuff, shall we? I'm going to talk for, oh, and 
Um, Quinn's bassinet playpen thing is right here, and that's where I'm pulling things out of. So <laughs> if I'm leaning pretty far, that's <laughs> that's what's going on. Um, let's talk first about the mystery knit along. If you're participating in the knitting game, the mystery of the traveling scarf, mystery, yeah, mystery of the traveling scarf, and you haven't done all of the clues, you don't have to look, but that's what I'm going to be talking about. This pattern is so much fun. I did talk about it in my last episode because I had purchased the pattern, but nothing had happened yet. So we're, we have, um, four clues now that we've done and it's, it's either a tubular scarf or you can do, um, like Afghan squares and, um, it's fingering weight yarn. It calls for 1700 yards. Um, if you want to join in, here's the fun part. It's a $10 pattern. You get one clue a week for 46 weeks. So it goes January through November. You can jump in at any time. She's also giving extra free patterns as bonuses. We've already received two and they're on sale or for sale on Ravelry for like $5 each. So I already in free patterns have my money's worth. The one that she just sent us was a really cool shawl out of bulky weight yarn that that in my mind I would love to spin yarn for and make, but yeah, right. <laughs> not, not right now. Um, but anyways, that's, yeah, neither here nor there right now. But anyways, it's a lot of fun. It's in the criminal knits group. Um, but yeah, and I do have a, a project page for it. If you want to find a specific or yes, uh, a link directly to, um, that pattern page. So you can buy the pattern. If you want to join in, please let me know if you, if you do join in post on the, the cow piggybacking, um, thread in, in the group. All right. Without further ado. The yarn I'm using is some Polworth that I spun. This is the red and orange. And it, it is a um, a rainbow. I promise she's okay if you can hear her crying. Um, she actually sounds tired. So anyways, this is the red and orange. It's 100% Polworth. It's from Fiber Nymph Dye Works. These are my four clues so far. So this isn't a clue. This is just the ribbing at the end. There's clue one and the garter between. Clue two, clue three. And here's this week's clue four. All right. And something that the, the designer um, said, because some people are, are closing theirs like they did a Judy's Magic cast on so that it wouldn't be open at the end. But she said that when she wears hers, she puts her hand in here in each end and uses it as, as a hand warmer, which I love that idea because I love my hoodie because I can put my hands in the pocket. Well, I don't always wear my hoodie. And so, um, this can give me a pocket to put my hand in. Um, the needles I'm using, she calls for a size four, but this is actually a fairly thin fingering weight. So I dropped down to a three and I ordered some, these are some chow goo, the wooden Chow goo's not everybody knows that they make wooden um, circulars. I really enjoy um, the finish on these. They're, they they are bamboo, but they're not that icky, the sticky clover kind that's like not treated. They're nice and smooth, um, and they have just enough grip that that this doesn't fall off. The reason I ordered them is because I needed a 12 inch, and I got them from shoot. I can't remember the name. It was an it was an Etsy shop and shipped. They were like eight bucks. Um, my local post office did lose them for about a week, which has never happened before. And then they just miraculously showed up <laughs> one day. So that was that was kind of funny. Um, anyways, that's in my one of my thirty one project bags. Um, all right, moving on. That is an FO. This is what I'm working on for the next class I'm going to be teaching. It is the Crazy Stripes Tea. Let me see the name of the gal. I, I don't remember her name. Um, Anne 
Lerno is her name. And it looks, I only have a black and white printer. But it looks like this. And I am still up at the top. It's a fingering weight sweater. This is my awesome pattern keeper. Okay, let's get this turned around here. Here's what I have so far. The construction at the top is amazing. Um, it's unlike anything I've ever um, seen or done before. Um, and it, I'm not going to give you stitch counts, so it won't give it away really, but you cast on here and work a few stripes and then put put it put it off and then uh, you know hold put it on a like yarn uh, and then you pick up along the side here and work down let's see if i can hold it so it shows so you work the the stripes to here oh i have an alarm going off there we go. So you pick up here and work this little flap. This way. And it's funny because that looks like they're slip stitches, but they're not. Oh, I know why. There's some tucked in yarn underneath there, but it, it doesn't look like that as much in person. And I can fix that later on too. <laughs> Anyways, so... Um, after you do that, then you pick them all up and, well, you only do, you only do like this much and then you start and you do that on both sides and then you start working all of it back and forth and it's, um, a set in sleeve, a knitted in one piece set in sleeve. So that's what I have so far. I'm really enjoying it. These colors are so much fun. They're even more, more vibrant than I think they're showing up on the screen. Um, the blue is called, well, oh, the, the yarn is from Knit Picks, actually. It's their Stroll Brights. I showed it in my last episode that I had received it in the mail. Um, the blue is Razzleberry, and the green is Sour Apple. And um, these are not usually colors that I would do a whole sweater in, but I'm loving them. And this yarn, I've used it before, is so soft. And I do expect it to pill some because it is a bit of a looser gauge in um, for for fingering weight and um, wool has to slough off the extra top layer. But that's all right. I can just um, you know get it get it off of there. I have a um, a stone. Actually, I actually have a lint shaver too, I guess. But anyways, um, so that's what I have. I'm not not very far into it. And I'm using size five needles. It calls for, I think it calls for a four. And so I swatched on a three because I usually have to drop down and I could not get, I did not even get close to gauge. It was nice and, and kind of tight and which I thought it would have been, um, but nope, it, I needed to go up to a five. So <clears throat> These are my Diacraft darn pretties that you can't order anymore because they're not making the wooden ones right now or possibly ever again. We don't know, but anyways, that is that. I have three skeins of each color. I decided not to do a third color accent because of the bright colors. I'm using my ablet um, for my row counter, but I just attached it to my zipper instead of having it on. That way it's always on my project or yeah my project bag this is another 31 bag okay I think I yep said everything about that one um that oh I do have one more thing that's on the needles but it's actually off the needles right now because <laughs> I have to do the next part of it this is a dog sweater <clears throat> that um I'm making for my aunt and uncle's dog my aunt bought the yarn and the pattern is actually out of, um, out of, what's it called? It's, it's a Lion Brand knitting book that they just 
like put online. It's from 1912. And they have, oh, there's one other pattern in that book that I really, really want to make. But anyways, this is, it's out of um, Perfection Yarn, which is a wool acrylic blend. <coughs> <coughs> and it has this, this waffle pattern. I decided to do larger light blue and smaller dark blue because I had used so much of the dark blue up here. So I wanted to make sure that I had enough. Um, and and I like the offset stripes a little better than just the solid um, or the consistent size stripes. I'm going to stretch my legs out here. Give me a second. Oh, okay. There we go. <clears throat> And then at the, I actually did one more repeat of these colors. I, I did about two inches more than what it called for because I was going off of the measurement of the dog that my aunt had sent me. So um, I haven't quite, you, you knit it flat and then um, I have sewn this seam here. I haven't tucked in the ends, but I've closed this seam here. And as you can see, I need to still close the neck. And then here's the front leg holes and um, I need to pick up and go around those and make little sleeves and then around the bottom or around the edging is actually um, a what did I end up doing a single crochet it called for a shell stitch and I didn't want to do scallops um, I don't I don't like that and I didn't want to do it so, <laughs> so I didn't do it I just did a nice single crochet all the way around and that it really um, ties it all together. So um, it it says to actually do crochet around the leg holes. I haven't decided if I'm going to knit or crochet them. Um, I'll decide that today. I want to get this done and, and get it over to them before it isn't cold anymore. But they live in Denver, so it stays colder a little longer than it does here, which is decently long. So the dog can wear the sweater probably into April. So. <laughs> So anyway, um, that's technically still on the needles, even though it's not. And, oh, haha. <laughs> Sorry, there's going to be bouncing. I have to lean quite a ways over. Do you remember the mitered square blanket that I started, I don't know, a couple years ago? Well, I pulled it out again because I was going to work on it, and I realized it was going to be too big. The square, the size of squares that I had chosen for the number of squares that I need was insane. So I decided to just start over. And that's what I have done. I may, I'm doing two squares a day. See, the squares I was doing before were 40 stitches that you start out with and then go down to one. These are 26 stitches. Let me tell you what. <laughs> Time-wise, so much better. Pretty much half the time. Um, this is what I have so far just the bottom two rows and then I've started the third row the blue yarn is just some good old red heart I think the brown I think the brown might be red heart as well a couple no the brown is something else that they carry at Michael's the Michael's version of red heart <laughs> you know the 100% acrylic I don't remember the name of it um, anyways it's going to be much better like I did the whole bottom strip. Um, and instead of doing it kind of in squares and building onto it, I did the whole thing so I could see how wide it's going to be. And this, I can't back up enough to show you. Um, let me see. Is it my wingspan? Okay, it's... Let's see. One, two... Three, four, five, six, about six inches shorter than me. So, um, four foot eight across. So, yeah, that's coming along. It's nice to work on, easy, easy peasy, just mitered squares. And what's nice is that you can just do, you know, doing the two. I can set it aside. I don't have to commit to an hour of doing a back and forth row. I can just boop, 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 done, put it away. Or if if I've worked on other stuff and want to work on it, I can do three or four squares and be a little bit ahead. Doing two squares a day gets me done. Huh? It rhymes. Two squares a day gets me done by May. 
but if I do more than that, I can get done sooner. So anyways, that's everything on the needles. I do have a couple of finished objects. One of them is on my foot. Let's see if I can turn. It's the socks that I was working on last time. They are awesome. They are by Ma Megan Williams and they are her static zing pattern. This is some Vesper yarn in the trick or treat colorway. And the bottom and back are um, just stockinette. Let's see if I can show you better with this one. Yeah, I did the fish lips kiss heel. So those are awesome. I want to make them again. I actually have yarn in mind that I don't own yet, but we'll be getting in the future <laughs> that I want to use for it. Let's turn this back how it was. Anyway, I did these on size zeros because there's a lot of purling involved on the top of the foot and they fit so snug. I, uh, I forgot how much I like size zero, um, socks. So I, I might, um, I might just start doing all my socks on zeros cause man, they fit nice. So anyways, amazing pattern, amazing designer. I love her to death. And, uh, yeah, so there's one FO. The other FO I have is actually a crocheted version of the infinity scarf that I showed you that I made for my mother-in-law, the green one. Um, I decided to make a crocheted version. I could have sworn I've recorded this before. <laughs> but I looked at my last podcast and I hadn't. Did I show this in my last one? No matter. Here it is, in case you haven't seen it. I don't... I, I'm pretty sure I looked over it. Oh well, maybe I never uploaded it to YouTube. <laughs> maybe that's maybe that's why I'm having a little bit of deja vu. Did I see now I need to go back and look. Maybe I did record when I never uploaded it. Either way, this is some fiber nymph dye works in the bounce base. And it's called Father Time, the colorway. It's a self-striping yarn. You can see it has the red the brown and the green and what I did and this will be this again is going to be a free pattern just the crocheted version of the the knitted one there's some single crochets and then a row of let's see right here of a triple to, to give kind of a you know spaced out look there I love to wear this thing and I wear it around my shoulders a lot at night. I will pull it on. Let's see if I can do this gracefully while on camera and not make you car sick or motion sick, I mean, from bouncing. There we go. Couldn't get hold of it. So this fits me perfectly. It's one skein of yarn that it uses up. I know I've talked about this before. Oh, anyway, <laughs> I know where I talked about it. It was at the New Year's Day thing. I put it on for them. <laughs> okay, let's see. Let's turn a little bit better here. So it fits on my shoulders really well. Come down here. And a lot of times at night, I will put this on to, you know, especially if I have like a short sleeve shirt on just to cover up my arms because I'll get a little bit cold. And then if I'm wearing it out somewhere, um, I've had it on kind of like this or just as a, just as a cowl. And it is, even though it's snug, not too tight, but snug, you know, you can wear it as a, a looped cowl. And because there's not really a right or wrong side, um, it, it, it doesn't matter if it flops one way or the other. So yeah, I'm, I'm loving it. And I actually started another one, um, that I have not worked on because 
Well, because I haven't. <laughs> no. I haven't worked on it because my knitting time, and well, fiber time, is so limited that I just um, want, I, I wanted to finish the dog sweater and get it done and <coughs> get that out of the way, you know, and I'm just about done with that. So, I'll, um, yeah, I'm going to take a drink. We're getting there, people. I promise. Something I wanted to show you is what they call in the stockinette zombies, their needle adjacent uh, project. I wound all of the yarn for my color work knit along um, project. Actually, I have two different projects. So let me show you that I'm going to do a hat with the exact same yarn, only different colors that I'm doing for the other one. I'm doing a gauge swatch essentially with the hat. And I'm going to use the same uh, color work chart as my sweater, only with these colors. This is, well, this is a dusty blue and a, a red, obviously, and kind of an orange, yellow orange. This yarn used to be this color, and then I over dyed it. This was a couple years ago. So if I told you the colors I used, it wouldn't matter because they wouldn't look like this on white yarn. <laughs> so anyways, those are what I'm going to use. They are 100 yards each of a sport weight. It's uh, brown sheep nature spun sport, not super wash. So there's that. And then my sweater, like I said, I, I um, wound the yarn for that. And I love, 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 love my ball winder because I can do ones that are this big cakes that are this big so we have this red brown that's called coffee bean and we have saddle tan and then I showed you the red fox last time but now you can really see them together like that that will be the sweater that I'm gonna knit for our knit along because I need to be an overachiever. But I figure with the hat, not only will I be able to do a gauge swatch, if I don't finish the sweater in time, I will at least have finished something. Woo! I will at least have finished something. <laughs> and I, will, I will have something from, from, the, um, from the, the knit along. So there's that. I also have another thing that will be going on the needles, and this kind of goes into acquisitions. Um, uh, one of my managers at work, she and I have become friends, and I, she mentioned that her birthday was coming up next month. I was like, hey, I could knit something for you. What do you want? And she said, I just want a cozy for my cup. She has one of those tumblers, you know, that has the, the hard plastic straw that doesn't come out. And Anyways, she just, she wants a, a cozy for it. And so when I was at the spin-in on New Year's Day, I picked up some of this yarn here it's it's old it's lane Bor borgosia borgos it's a merino cable yarn and it's 50% merino 50% acrylic and it's really cool and i wish i had autofocus but it's it's a cabled yarn you can see let's see if i turn my head see how round it is and she loves purple and this is I mean a nice it's a nice grape juice purple color so anyways it's what is it a DK DK weight yeah a DK weight and how many yards is it yards about 148 it says plus or minus 148 so that'll be plenty I already have a pattern actually pulled up on my uh, internet when I pull up my internet my internet screen it's the boxy I don't know, something or other I wanted to know a, a, I mainly wanted to know kind of a stitch count of what other people were using and decided that I just like I was just gonna make one up and I like that pattern so um, 
I think I'll use that or either that or I'll do just ribbing to make sure that it fits nice and snug. So anyways, um, that will be on the needles soon as well because her birthday's in February. All right. Um, ah, I do have a surprise. Yesterday at the spinning group, I actually spun. It's been nearly a year. I think like the last time I remember spinning was March of last year and I spun this. So yesterday I spun the second bobbin of it. I'm doing a four ply, which I've never done before. I, and when I got home, I was like, I still want to spin. So I started a third bobbin of it. That's out on my wheel. It looks the same. I brought the fiber in to show you though. It is from the Sassy Sheep. It's her Moonlight colorway. It, this is some BFL. It has white, gray, darker gray, a blue, and then it goes into a black. So I have this much of the third bobbin worth and then this last for the fourth bobbin. Hey, I bet Jake was looking for that. Ha! Chapstick. That's his. And, um, yeah, it's BFL top. 100% superwash BFL. From the Sassy Sheep. So, um, yeah, I love spinning BFL. Love it, love it, love it. And there's stuff flittering around. So, yeah, that was, that was a lot of fun. Like, I have never forgotten how much I enjoy spinning. I just had a hard time justifying it with before, before I got my job, I was just busy with trying to keep up with, with some other knitting stuff. And then when I got my job, I was like, "Ugh, I already can't knit, let alone add in spinning, but I'm so happy I did. I, even if I can just do 15 minutes each day, I need to just, I need to do that. So, um, yeah, and I just have a couple more things to show you. Um, I'm going to move into acquisitions really quick here. I don't have any designing right now. Um, I Like I showed you, my, my FO there, um, I'll write that up eventually. <laughs> my hair caught on my finger. And, um, I got a couple of books yesterday at when I was at the spin-in, the gal who's moving was um, getting rid of some of her books. And these are not knitting related at all, but um, I wanted to show them to you anyway. This is Real Simple, The Organized Home. I thought it would be, um, I thought it would give me some ideas because we have a lot of stuff in our small house, but stuff that we actually need. And I don't want to just have piles of totes everywhere. So I, I was hoping that this might, um, you know, give me some ideas for things to do around the house. And if it doesn't, if I look through it and I don't like it, I can always pass it along. The other thing I got was the Little Bean Cookbook. And I sat down and looked through this today and holy cow, it has some really yummy looking recipes. <laughs> so um, anyways, so there's that. All right, finishing off. My acquisition is, besides that purple, is this big bag of yarn that's actually a whole bunch of cones of the same yarn. It is, does it say what kind? It is 100%. It's just called Colonial White. Um, and this yarn is amazing. I saw it knit up, and she sells it by the pound. I got it on the New Year's Day thing. I want you to see, do you see how round that is? And the plies, how you how much you can see them? So amazing. And when you knit with it, the yarn just stays round. I don't know how many plies. I think it's just four plies. Yeah, one, two, three, four. But oh. Anyways, I got enough. Let me see, did it say how many ounces I got? Four pounds, two ounces is what 
I got. And it tells how many, about well, 500 yards per pound. So um, anyways, I knew she had this yarn. Let me see if there was anything else. I knew she had the yarn <clears throat> and I knew I wanted some of it. So before I went up there, I went through, um, my, you know, my, my stuff on Ravelry, the patterns on Ravelry that are in my favorites and whatnot to see what I had that called, cause that's a, that's a bulky weight yarn. And, um, or well, Aaron bulky, I need to do a gauge swatch, but I'll wind it off onto into skeins and soak it first. So it can, it can bloom. So there's a vest and kind of like a coat that I want to make. And so I got enough to make them both and actually probably a little bit more <laughs> than that. And I plan to dye it later on. I don't know if I'll dye it before I knit with it or after like for the vest, it, a coat, I wouldn't dye afterwards. The vest is smaller, but I think I'll probably still dye it before then. Um, I don't know what color. I think the vest will probably be, um, gray or like a, like a gray blue. And then the coat, I don't know the one, in the picture is red and I really like that it's red and I kind of want to do a red one. So anyways, we'll see. Lastly, um, before I wrap things up, I wanted to hear from you. Um, I have this cone plus two skeins of, um, it's from Brown Sheep and it's their um, cotton, cotton fine, no. Cotton. Yeah, cotton fine. And it's it's 80% cotton, 20% wool. I'm wanting to make a garment out of it. Like a kind of a loose fitting sweater that I can just, you know, grab and put like a cardigan, but one that is a little bit longer and just kind of hangs. So it would be at a little bit of a looser gauge. I think I, I don't know. I haven't decided that yet. I, I don't know. Um, but just something I can grab and put on over something else. And like I said, I'm, I'm imagining it to go, um, not probably just like the, to the top of my thigh. I'm really short and I've tried on like those mid thigh sweaters and they, they make me look even shorter than I already am. So below my hip, but down to like the bottom of my hip joint, if that makes sense something along those lines. Anyways, what I'm wanting to know from all of you experts is it's, Oh, it's, did I say it was fingering weight? It's fingering weight. Um, how, how much is it going to stretch with it being 80, 80, 20 and being a, a fingering weight? I can do a swatch, but that's not going to give me an idea of stretch or weight or anything realistic. I know this can be thrown in the washer and dryer because things that I've made out of it in the past, I can throw them in the washer and dryer and, you know, shrink it back up. And I know that cotton does stretch when it hangs and it can get heavy. But like I said, it, it, it does have the 20% wool that will help with the memory and it is a lighter weight yarn. So if you could tell me what you think, um, I would appreciate it because I really want to have a lightweight sweater out of this, which is why I didn't use it for my crazy stripes tee. So anyways, all right, that's all I have for you. Please stay tuned because I took a couple of videos of Quinn from the other night. <laughs> it wasn't the other night. It was the other morning. It was 3 30 AM. She was being hilarious in the hall carrying this. It, it's actually a cloth diaper insert, totally clean, washed with hot water. <laughs> she was carrying it in her mouth and crawling around and looked like a puppy and then was playing with it. And so it's a minute or two of fun. It's like four different short videos that I'm going to put together and put it here at the end. So please watch it. She just, she's hilarious. And it's not just cause she's my kid. Like it's funny. <laughs> and the fact that she's in the hall and the closed doors that you see are bedrooms where my children and my husband were sleeping and she's squawking. And I couldn't pull her out of there because she was just being too funny. So anyways, they didn't wake up. <laughs> but anyways, thank you for watching for this hour and four minutes that will turn into an hour and six or seven minutes. But by the time I add everything and do all that, thank you for watching. 
contact me if you have any questions. Please, please post in the group. I would love to have more chatter and I promise that I will be podcasting more. Like I said, I just have to figure out when, <laughs> when will work. So anyways, have a great week or two and yeah, keep knitting. Bye.